Welcome to a basic introduction to mechanical ventilation. This is chapter 2.3, Plateau Pressure. So here's our problem. High pressure inside the lungs is harmful, and yet high pressure in the airway, like the trachea and the bronchus, is not really. But how can you separate the two? As we've seen in the equation of motion, the airway pressure is composed of three parts. The PEEP, the airway component, and the lung component. So in order to understand what the pressure in the lungs is, you have to use the equation of motion. Now getting rid of the PEEP part is pretty easy. You can either just uh, subtract it from it or you can set the uh, zero on the ventilator for PEEP and uh, that, that, that issue is now gone. In reality, we rarely actually worry about the PEEP part unless there happens to be a lot of intrinsic PEEP, which is the topic of a separate conversation. So how do we get rid of the airway part so we can just measure the pressure in the lungs? Well, we could do the same thing as we did with the PEEP component if we could just measure the airflow and the airway resistance, but we can't. But if there was no airflow, then multiplying the zero airflow with the airway resistance would still give us a zero and effectively remove that component. And once we've done that, you're left effectively with just the lung component. Now, in order to get the airflow to zero, we can perform an inspiratory pause. When the ventilator has completely delivered its tidal volume, and this applies only to the case when the ventilator is set to volume control ventilation and not to pressure control ventilation, then the breath hold during that phase of the inspiration cycle results in a drop in the pressure from the peak airway pressure down to a lower pressure that we call the plateau pressure. So this is the pressure that the lungs are experiencing. Now in general, if the plateau pressure is greater than 32, then the lungs are actually being injured. But when the peak airway pressure is less than 32, it's in physically impossible for the plateau pressure to be greater than the, the peak pressure, and so the plateau pressure will always be lower than 32, and therefore the lung is at less risk of harm. When you look on the screen, you can see that there's a gap between the peak airway pressure and the plateau pressure. Put in another way, this is the pressure contributed to the total airway pressure by the airway component, which we've removed by the inspiratory pause. This means that if there's an increase in the peak airway pressure, and you measure the plateau pressure, and it's unchanged from previously, then the increase in pressure that you're seeing is actually due to something going on in the airway, such as increased resistance or a change in the airflow. But if the peak airway pressure goes up and so does the plateau pressure, then the increased pressure is due to something going on in the lungs. Now this can be either because the lung compliance has gone down or a higher tidal volume is being delivered than what could have been previously tolerated. So to summarize, the plateau pressure is our way of figuring out what the pressure in the lungs is by subtracting the airflow component, making it zero using an inspiratory pause, and that removes the airway component of the equation of motion. Higher lung pressures are damaging to the lungs, and this is why we pay close attention, especially when the mode of ventilation is volume control, as opposed to pressure control ventilation, where we can deliberately keep the airway pressures below harmful levels.